In today's news, opposition leader the Honorable Marlon A. Penn says increase in port fees are a travesty to the local economy. We also see former tourism boss, uh, of course, former director of the BVI Tourist Board, Mrs. Sharon Flax Brutus, adding to the conversation uh, herself as well as tourists are very frustrated over the delayed COVID-19 results and saying there are too many excuses. Mrs. Lauren Ryan Reimer of Unlock Potential joins us live to discuss an upcoming ADH parent support group and BVI COVID cases continue to rise. We have all the details and so much more. After a word from our sponsors, you're watching 284 News. Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday, April 6th, 2021. As I always say, a terrific Tuesday because we are live and well, coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. I'm Ron Grant. Alive, well, and kicking. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Javon Wilson here, of course, so happy to be joining you for another edition of 284 News. Long, beautiful weekend, but definitely time for us to get back to yes. business. Uh, confirming over the weekend, uh, cases, COVID-19 cases are now at 18 um, and we do see uh, the Minister of Health, Honorable Carvin Malone, confirming that just yesterday, but also making a very special appeal to members of the BVI to come forward yes. and get vaccinated. Also over the weekend, Mellow Moods, uh, of course, uh, a famous spot for vegan meals, burglarized uh, over the weekend. Now, shortly after 1 p.m. on Sunday, uh, this was discovered by an employee. Um, According to reports, the perpetrator would have entered the establishment between uh, April 3rd and 4th through a back entrance and escaped with just about $250 out of the cash pan, as well as an unknown amount from the tips jar. While no one has been identified as yet, uh, it is promised that CCTVs might help in the process Indeed. of of revealing who the perpetrator or perpetrators were. On the international scene, DMX, rapper DMX, uh, is now hospitalized due to an alleged drug overdose, and the prognosis is definitely not a good one uh, this time around. Sources to the, uh, close to the rapper said that the OD occurred at his home around 11 p.m., which may have triggered a heart attack. And, of course, uh, so much to get into as it relates to the conversation on port fees, Ron. Yes, Just indeed. today, we spoke with the BVI Ports Authority and really had a chance to zero in on their reasoning behind it, the fees. Also, a conversation with the BVI businesses, because it's always important for us to balance that conversation. Of course, and the business owners, as we know, are, are some of the main persons who are going to, again, uh, be experiencing difficulties as a result of these fees. Continuing on. On our summary level, Statistics Act to be revised to require mandatory compliance, and the UK has ended direct funding for the Recovery and Development Agency. No intention to cut staff, says RDA Director. Of course, Cabinet imposes crowd restrictions following the spike in COVID-19 cases, and opposition leader, the Honorable Marlon A. Penn, is accusing the government of dropping the ball on vaccine. He has a lot to say in regards to the handling of that. Uh, we're going to get into that as well. A uh, heavy newscast today. Now, beginning with... Uh uh, information coming out of the government, according to an official government update, the BVI's toll of COVID-19 cases has increased to 18. This was confirmed by the minister himself, Honorable Carvin Malone, during a public update last evening. Listen in. Seven of the 18 active cases in the territory were either returning tourists or cases within our population. Persons occupying common spaces with positive cases were asked to self-isolate for a period of 10 days. Persons in direct contact with positive cases were asked to quarantine 
to avoid the risk of spreading the virus to unknown and unassuming persons within the territory as a result of these facts. Active and aggressive contact tracing exercises and COVID-19 testing have commenced on Tortola and completed on Anagata. I am pleased to report that the Public Health Unit and the Community Health Unit of the Hospital Services Authority have been actively engaged in the contact tracing activity. Persons on Tortola with possible exposure are being notified and are expected to be tested on Tuesday, April 6th and Wednesday, April 7th at the Ebenezer Thomas Primary School in Seacouse Bay between the hours of 9 a.m. Navier's Honorable Malone also stated that of the 18 cases, seven were returning tourists or cases within the population. And as a result, health officials are actively engaging in contact tracing and, of course, providing opportunities for persons to get tested who may have been exposed. Listening. In report from the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital Certified Laboratory, as of today, April 5th, of the 178 positive cases diagnosed, there was one untimely death. 159 cases have recovered, and the number of active positive cases in the territory now stands at 18. This accounts for 14 persons on Tortola, one on Anagata, and three on marine vessels. Based on the epidemiological summary provided by the public health unit team, four of these cases were captured in the arriving day one screening, seven on the day four screening, and three through travel screening. A concerning reality is that we have four local cases, one of whom is hospitalized, though for other non-COVID that was, that was our health minister, sorry, encouraging persons to come forward and get tested. Now, the recent spike was traced to a visitor who recently returned to the BVI to attend a funeral. Once prompted by 284 Media, health officials stated that an error was made in the issuing of a quarantine clearance letter to the individual on March 25th after conducting a test the day before on March 24th. They clarified that the document was quickly retracted and the individual was made aware of their positive status and instructed to remain in quarantine. Now, the visitor then requested confirmation testing and received two additional positive tests as of Friday, March 26th, which was actually one day prior to the funeral. However, that person was determined to attend the funeral service and officials say went against their orders and attended the funeral despite instructions. Now, this has resulted in some new cabinet decisions, which now include Crowd sizes, uh, which have been uh, reduced for indoor and outdoor establishments, that has been reduced from 200 to now 75 persons. Crowd sizes for faith-based services, graduations, weddings, and funerals have been also reduced from 200 to 100. And if persons may need approval for over 75 persons to be at outdoor events, they must make a written request out to the minister uh, overseeing, of course, which is Minister Honorable Malone, and recommended to the National Security Council. Uh, the, the government also recommended that the curfew order remains in force, and that is going to be from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. daily. This will expire on the 15th of April. Now, though cases continue to rise, there is still a high level of reluctance from residents to take the vaccine. BVI landers are showing up in the lowest numbers, according to officials. Honorable Malone said, and I quote, as of Monday, April 5th, 8,246 first doses have been administered. We have 6,971 on Tortola, 1,118 on Virgin Gorda, 68 on Yaswin Dyke, and 89 on Anigada. The monthly statistics reveal that 4,068 units were administered during the month of February, 37.90 during March, and we also see as far as in April, we see 388 units. Honorable Malone is imploring the public 
To be vigilant as the vaccines may soon expire, the first shipment of the vaccine has a shelf life of early May. The second shipment is early June and the third early July. Now, Ron, lots coming out of the weekend. Indeed. A lot of which we were uh, able to confirm prior to uh, the minister's update, uh, being that a press release was sent out. Uh, but, however, we do see the minister coming forward and giving official uh, confirmation on where we are and what needs to be done going forward. One of the interesting jo uh, things, Jovan, that's coming out of this story is that yet again, the cabinet of the Virgin Islands has uh, instituted a number of uh, uh, different restrictions as it pertains to crowd uh, control. But what we see uh, in, in, in prior incidents and gatherings, in particular that said funeral that really sparked this entire thing, is that social distancing uh, numbers were not adhered to, the wearing of masks was not consistent, and we see this across the board in a number of different gatherings uh, that it seems very... Uh, selective where persons would choose and authority members who are present themselves would choose to adhere or not. And I think this is uh, holistically the problem. Uh, we have to continue to uh, make it across the board that we're uh, going uh, with the rules and not when situations arise. And we, you know, we want to institute um, fines and, and whatever um, different situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, another, ec another sentiment being echoed as well is the fact that you know, the system has failed. Correct. And the people continue to pay the price for the system failing. Again, when you examine the case of this individual, yes. clearly uh, the monitoring, the geofencing and the monitoring system, if it was closely monitored, uh, this individual would not have been able to escape. And so we need to ensure that the, six, uh, the systems sorry, are effective uh, because the people cannot continue to perish and punish at the expense of Indeed. one person making a mistake or in this case, uh, the system's not working as they should. All right, continuing on, leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, the Honorable Marlon A. Penn, has called the increase in port fees a travesty to the people of this territory and to our economy. This is simply not the right time, Honorable Penn said in the recent decision to increase port fees as a means to operate and develop the port's facilities in an effort to retain our international shipping certification. In a recent interview, Honorable Penn said the current cost of doing business in the BVI is is high. This increase will only result in inflation of those costs. Now the consequence, he said, of which will have a uh, detrimental impact on our economy. The leader of the opposition further explained that in driving up the cost of goods and services, this will be reflected especially in the construction material resulting in increased cost of construction. This then will cause a person to halt new construction projects, which will in turn reduce economic spe uh, spend, sorry, subsequently bringing about a uh, decline in jobs and economic growth. And finally, he said, send our economy into a recession. Now, for those businesses, he continued, owners whose businesses are already on life support, this fee increase will only create um, additional hardship for those already struggling uh, in business. Business owners will have no other choice but to pass those very same increased fees onto the consumer, thus negatively impacting our economy. Now, Honorable Penn said, and I quote, I am extremely concerned with the timing of these increased fees. It comes at a time when we uh, can ill afford it, a time when persons do not have the ability to sustain this shock imposed by the government. Honorable Penn continued, the opposition leader called on the Premier as the Minister for Ports to step up and of course to acknowledge that this is not the right time and rescind the current decision. Additionally, in his capacity of Minister of Finance, Honorable Penn implored the Finance Minister to find resources to support the BVI Ports Authority in retaining its international shipping certification. Now further, in urging the Premier to take a step back and consider how this decision adversely affects both businesses and consumers, Honorable Penn stated that the government cannot pass this burden onto the businesses and ultimately consumers, many of whom have been unemployed and underemployed for over a year now due to the bad economic policies. The leader of the opposition mentioned that during the critical time of the global pandemic, the BVI Ports Authority proceeded to purchase property and rent space throughout the territory of the Virgin Islands. The BVI Ports Authority continued increasing its expenses, he said, while cutting salaries to daily paid workers, all while executives of the port maintained their salaries. He said, and I quote, the people of this territory should not have to pay for the mismanagement of the BVI Ports Authority. Those per, uh, poorly thought out decisions hugely 
underscores what my colleagues and I in the opposition continue to express, that this administration has proven that there is no plan in place for the economic recovery of the islands. Now, Penn opined, adding, I urge the Premier to present an economic plan and put policies in place to stimulate the economic growth versus slowing it down. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, Honorable Penn said, it is imperative that the government rescind this decision to use the BVI Ports Authority to create inflation whereby driving up the cost of goods and services and present, present sorry, a plan uh, focused on the economic recovery and growth of this territory. Uh, Jovan, a line in there that really stood out, um, he was urging uh, the Premier to put an economic plan in place to stimulate the economic growth versus slowing it down. Mm -hmm. It does, in, in, in all our realization, feel as though the territory is continuing to be slowing down um, on the economic stretch, and it is extremely uh, strenuous on the business community. I think um, we, we definitely got a lot out of the Ports Authority um, interview that we're going to cover, but it continues to put a strain on uh, citizens. I'm happy to see the opposition leader lend into this conversation, Ron, and really echo in because, you know, sometimes when we have issues, what, what tends to happen is we politicize everything. Of so course. there's lots of back and forth, but rarely do we tune in to what's happening on the ground. And this time around, it's affecting businesses. And I don't even think our consumers realize how much it's going Many to affect them. Many of them don't. Them. Yes. Um, this is not a situation or an issue between the BVI Ports Authority and the business community. You, as uh, members of this community, will be severely af uh, af affected. I mean, we're looking at gas prices uh, looking to rise to $5 within a few days. Cost of lumber uh, has already increased. Absolutely, with a minimum wage at $6. And we have heard that the Premier, yes, is in conversations with the BVI Ports Authority to put forward a, a better resolve. But, Ron, realistically... Um, I don't think anything much will come out of that because based on what we heard today from the BVI Ports Authority, um, they stand to lose uh, their, um, their certification, certification because that inspection is literally around the corner. Another thing you mentioned was the uh, mismanagement of funds, according to Honorable Marlon Penn, with the recent purchase of $2 million. We even questioned whether maybe we can sell the land uh, to make up for the revenue loss or mismanagement. As well as other property across right. the territory. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and there's so much to go around when it comes to this issue. Uh, but viewers, if you missed the interview, uh, be sure to head back to our page. Uh, we spoke with the business community as well who shared their very uh, clear concerns on this issue. Vera is still ahead, former director of the BVR Tourist Board. Sharon Flax Brutus is speaking out on delayed COVID-19 test results for tourists and how it is affecting the already struggling industry. And Lauren Ryan Reimer of Unlocked Potential joins us live to discuss an upcoming ADH parent support group. You want to uh, definitely tune into this interview. The wind up. What the hell? is about this It's always a pleasure coming to you live and direct from the... What's poppin' what's really good? Davis has won it for the Lakers! Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now more on the local scene. A quote from social media. Why is it that we are waiting normally in excess of 36 hours to get test results? Folks in quarantine are now still waiting, still hoping, dinner reservations lost, boat trips lost, vehicles, rentals lost, taxi lost. If we can't turn around in the 24 to 36 hours stated, then the hospitable thing to do is to tell our guests so. Those of us in the hospitality uh, industry try our best to keep them happy. It's a tough call, but this is our livelihood. That's uh, the little that's left. This is no way to treat returning residents and guests. We've got to do better. Too many excuses. End of quote. Now, viewers, those were those very clear and strong words from a former director of the BVI Tourist Board and now director of operations 
at Virgin God of Villas, Mrs. Sharon Flax Brutus, via her recent Facebook po uh, post. Now, as Mrs. Flax Brutus stated, many tourists are stuck in this predicament and even residents who travel and return under similar circumstances. These persons were initially told that they would receive COVID-19 results within 24 hours of the day four test being administered. However, many tourists remain stuck in quarantine due to these delays and unable to indulge in the BVI as much as intended. Now, the health officials have since responded, saying that the go live of the BVI Health Services Authority's new health information system is what's responsible for the delays in persons receiving their COVID-19 test results. Acting Chief Executive Officer uh, Mrs. Cedarine Malone-Smith Malone said that persons can now expect their results in 36 to 48 hours instead of 24 to 36 hours. According to the CEO, the authority is currently in the process of transitioning from a dated electronic medical record, the EMR system, to a new and improved one. She said, and I quote, this necessary upgrade will make us more efficient in the administration of our day-to-day -day functioning. The upgrade will also improve our service delivery to the BVI community, she added. She further stated that the system upgrade will also assist in reducing delays and maintaining a high level of quality care at public health care facilities. She further emphasized, and I quote, We want to thank our hard-working hard staff for implementing our dumb time backup procedures as we work to resolve this matter patient safety is and remains our top priority now there is despite uh, that the justification from health services there still has been lots of public backlash one resident said and i quote contingencies should have been made during the go life period the government does not understand the ramifications of these delays on our visitors not everyone who comes here for their seven to ten day vacation expects to spend almost the whole time under quarantine due to poor planning on our part end of quote now there is of course the bvi reopened uh, doors on December 1st, 2020, marking the first time international visitors were actually able to set foot in the territory since closure in March. Since then, travelers have been able to access the territory through the Terrence B International Airport, which has a current testing capacity of 100. Now, according to recent announcements, the BVI Port Authority is now set to reopen to international ferry passengers on April 15th. This will be at an initial capacity of 50 travelers bringing our total testing to an average of 150 daily. Now, these numbers are definitely expected to increase significantly as our territory prepares to welcome fully vaccinated cruise ship tourists come June 2021. Lots of details to go around. Uh, and lots we, of frustrations, continued uh, frustrations. Absolutely, Ron. Um, and, and I think it comes back to one thing again, successive planning, being proactive. Yes, this is a fluid situation, uh, but we need to understand where our bread and butter is. And that is definitely in the tourism industry. And we need to do as much as we can collectively. Pull the experts together. Indeed. We um, have a lot of experts, yeah. a lot of trained experts here in the BB, And I don't think mm -hmm. that they're being utilized. Right. Pull them together. It's, it's not a time for us to necessarily decide uh, who's going to take the lead. I think collectively we could get through this thing together. Well, not only that, but we see where uh, many of our leaders are leading from the back because they themselves are not, um, they're not setting the precedence. Mm -hmm. They're not setting the example. And I think it's important that they move from the back, move to the front and continue to lead us as they should. Now, viewers, continuing on a very positive, positive note, uh, we have with us today Mrs. Lauren Ryan Reimer of Unlocked Potential. Mrs. Reimer, welcome to uh, 284 News. And thanks for having me, Ron. Our absolute pleasure. Now, you and your team at Unlocked Potential are gearing up for a virtual parent support group for uh, children and adults with H ADHD. Sorry, And we are so excited that you've uh, thought it best to really uh, bring this platform to the general public. Uh, many persons in the territory, as well as children and adults, both um, are suffering with ADHD. And I think uh, over the years, we've gotten to a point where ADHD is more of a conversation. Uh, it's no longer um, children are disgusting or they don't have any behavior. We're now getting to a point where we are, are willing to have these conversations. Tell us about why you decided uh, to host uh, this support group. Um, so one of the things, Ron, that I um, ventured out to do is uh, just get on as much details as I could on this subject okay. because I have a son who um, has some ADHD traits and um, 
because of the challenges that I experienced over the past couple of years, you know, I decided, you know, it's time for me to see what assistance I could get him as well as to help other parents who may fall into similar situations. Understood. Now, how long have you been working uh, with your son as it pertains to uh, learning and developing? And of course, you are a trained coach. Um, how long has that been? Okay, so I completed my coaching um, program last year um, where I did coaching for children, adults, and uh, college students. Okay. I did those coaching last year. And uh, in terms of helping my son, I um, started that maybe about six years or so okay. ago. Um, identified that I was having some challenges with him when it comes to school. And uh, some of those challenges included um, homework that would normally take like about half an hour. It would take me like three hours, you know, just getting him settled to do homework. That was a challenge. Um, it would be, I couldn't go from school to homework. I had to give him a break and then get into the homework. And even when we started homework, by seven o'clock he was no use to himself. Okay. So, um, you know, I had to do trial and error with him to see what worked. And uh, that's how I kind of got started with him. Understood. Now, as a parent uh, yourself living um, and working with a child who has a ADHD, um, what are some of the uh, elements that are missing in our community that would better uh, support both adults and children and parents um, in this regard? Because, of course, it could be very challenging. What, what do we need as it pertains to the support? Um, it's, it, uh, one of the things I would say, Ron, is we have to really say to ourselves that the problem does exist. Um, when you, you, you tell people that, hey, you know, um, your child may have a problem, mm -hmm. people don't want to hear that their children it's have a problem. It's almost insulting for some. Yeah. Um, you know, so they don't want to hear that there's a problem for children in their, with their child, sorry. And uh, because of that, the, the problem just goes unnoticed. There are no um, efforts to help the child. Um, even in schools, um, sometimes your child might be in class, they're not finishing homework, and there's no follow-up on why you're not finishing right. your homework, they're not completing their notes, why aren't you completing your notes? You know, so there are a lot of things that factor into a child who has that problem. Um, they sometimes are not focused in class, or they're distracted by other things, you know, and uh, I think it's time now for us to really look at the challenges and say, okay, yes, this is the problem. How can I get help? Indeed. Now, the upcoming virtual uh, uh, session that's going to be held on April 15th, uh, 2021, uh, how can persons get in contact with you for those who are interested in being a part of this uh, support group? Sure. So you can contact me at my cell, which is 499-2025, or you can email me on unlockedpotentialvi at gmail.com. All right, and viewers, some of the topics uh, that are going to be covered, of course, in the support group, they're going to be bringing awareness to ADHD, discussing challenges, uh, confronting a lot of the issues that are faced, uh, share strategies, support, most importantly, our children, and create a loving environment. And Mrs. Uh, Reimer, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and thank you so much for this initiative, which I do know will be a benefit to many persons in the community. I do hope uh, they support it. Uh, continue uh, doing what you're doing as it pertains to Unlock Potential and raising awareness uh, uh, with children uh, who are living with ADHD. We thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ron. You're most welcome. Uh, Jovan, mm -hmm. that's a wrap. All right. I'm so happy to see us con continuing the conversation um, on all aspects of, of health, Ron, especially within this time. Um, as parents, I think, have a one-on-one, -on -one, a, a deeper one-on-one -on -one interaction yes. with their kids, especially since schools are not uh, necessarily fully back to physical or to conventional uh, school 
it's it's tough. It is tough, and it's very important that we understand what's going on uh, with our children, not only physically but mentally as well. And I really, really commend uh, Ms. Reimer for the whole aspect of support group. Uh, mm -hmm. These topics are so. Uh, People don't like talking about them. It's still them. considered um, it's still taboo. taboo. It's weird. Um, so when we think about it, creating a, a safe space um, for this uh, uh, matter, I think, mm -hmm. is uh, warranted, and we thank her so much. Absolutely, viewers. That's all the time we have for today. But check us out via 284media.com. We're also on Facebook, 284media, and 284bvi on Instagram as well as Twitter. My name is Javon Wilson, and I'm Ron Grant. It's always a pleasure. We will see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and of course, international content. Have a happy Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.